Before I wrap up on Sumer by discussing its annexation into the Akkadian Empire, let me just announce that from now on, I will not only be using the Encyclopedia Britannica, but also two history textbooks. One of them is the world history textbook that I used during my sophomore year of high school, whereas the other was published by the Smithsonian Institution. High School History versus the Smithsonian Institution. Which is more reliable? It depends on the topic. That is why I'll be looking at both books whenever I'm doing historical research for a particular lecture. Throughout History 01, we will not be depending on one history textbook as though it is the infallible word of God. No, we will be comparing the teachings of both books, looking for similarities and differences. Whenever there are discrepancies between these two books, we will explore why they disagree and then use the two historical methods, historical research and historiography, to figure out which of the conflicting accounts is more accurate. Now, you'll be surprised to know that the high school history textbook, World History, The Modern Era, doesn't, does not say a whole lot about Sargon of Akkad, the king of the Akkadian Empire. This is because the book focuses more on the modern era with a capital M and a capital E. The modern era can be divided into early modern and late modern, and we will not be discussing any topic of the modern era until many, many lectures down the road. Thankfully, the Smithsonian textbook, History from the Dawn of Civilization to the Present Day, tells us that Sargon, the King of Akkad, turned his homeland into an empire in the year 2340 BC. Now, the founding of the Akkadian Empire occurred along these lines. Sargon of Akkad started a war between Akkad and Sumer, and the former annexed not only the latter, but also Assyria and the Mesopotamian lands that lay further west. Here's a map of the full extent of the Akkadian Empire. Sargon had unified several Mesopotamian city-states under Akkadian rule, but even though Akkad was already the dominant region, he founded Akkad City, the heartland of his centralized authority. No one knows where Akkad City was located, although archaeologists do have a few guesses, and that is why the black-colored, smaller version of the word Akkad sits next to a question mark. The brown-colored, bigger version of the word Akkad does not need a question mark because we know that this word refers to the entire region of Akkad, not Akkad City. Sumerian did not yet go extinct, but Akkadian was the language of the general population. Since Akkadian was a Semitic language, the Akkadian Empire was the first Semitic-speaking empire. Yes, there was also the Assyrian Semitic language of Aramaic, but remember, Akkad annexed Assyria, not the other way around. Therefore, Akkadian culture was more dominant than Sumerian and Assyrian culture combined. We will discuss in a future lecture the internal affairs of the Akkadian Empire, and then in the lecture after that, we will cover the reasons we, why the Akkadian Empire dissolved. Join me again in a few minutes so that we can wrap up today with a lecture for Psychology 01.